DVD has a lot of perks and each update just keeps adding more and more, but you only have 4 slots to pick from and this results in everyone just getting the best perks in the game, which causes a lot of perks to end up not being used because they simply cannot compete. For example, why would anyone pick Quick Gambit over a perk like Adrenaline or Proof Diesel? And this led me to Nightlight, a website that tracks the pick rates of killers and perks alike to see what were the least used perks in the game. And honestly, I was kinda surprised. So let's talk about the least used killer perks and why nobody is using them. Now a quick disclaimer before we start, Nightlight does not track the overall usage of perks in game and instead it's community based. So the sample size is very low but by using common sense it can be deduced that the actual pick rates are similar. Predator 0.41% Predator is a Wraith teachable perk that makes the scratch marks left by the survivor spawn closer together, which supposedly makes it easier to track. I say supposedly because they actually hurt me whenever I used Predator, and based on the usage rates I don't think I am the only one. What I find the impactful is that out of all the perks that we will mention in this video, Predator is the only teachable that belongs to a completely free character, Wraith. So that means the vast majority of the player base has access to this perk, yet nobody is using it besides Spirit Mains. The problem of Predator is that it gets outclassed in the two niches it fills out. The first niche is the Spirit Combo, which helps her track survivors while using her power. But Strider does this way better as you normally use audio cues in order to find survivors and not visual ones. The second issue is that the Wraith himself has Bloodhound, another perk with very low usage but overall it's better than Predator because once the survivors are injured it is significantly easier to follow their tracks. This makes Predator obsolete, so only very new Wraith players and adept goers use this perk. It's obvious that this perk needs a complete rework without forgetting that it cannot be too crazy since it's one of the starter perks, so it cannot be overcomplicated. Maybe making the footsteps sound louder could be a good step in the right direction? Deathbound 0.49% Deathbound is a pyramid head perk that has a very unique effect. Whenever a survivor heals another one 32 meters away from you, it makes both of them scream and oblivious whenever they are separated from each other for 60 seconds. Honestly, the design of the perky is really interesting and funnily enough, it might get some use with the future healing nerf because one of the problems is that it requires two people to interact with each other, which is not happening with how strong medkits and circle of healing is. But even with that out of the way, the perk is still bad and mostly because of the 32 meter range, which is huge and something that you won't control unless you use perks like Colrophobia to incentivize survivors to leave the terror radius. It doesn't benefit Pyramid Head much and it's probably the only perk that gets no use while doing the adept achievement. I think making the perk based on terror radius would be better because then you can take advantage of it with even stealthy characters like Ghostface or Pig and it would combo very well with Myers. As of right now, there are just way better oblivious and undetectable perks, so nobody can get any good use from them. In fact, I haven't seen a single niche build from any content creator featuring Deathbound. Hex, the third seal, 0.4%. Besides Predator, third seal is one of the oldest teachable perks in the game as it came included with the hack and ever since its release, it has been considered as the weakest hex out of them all. All it does is give the blindness status effect to the survivors whenever they are hit, and the only change it has ever gotten is that now, characters can also inflict this effect with their power. The problem is that blindness is not that strong of an effect, especially against survive with friends, but I still think that this perk can be very annoying in certain situations against solo survivors because the blindness prevents survivors from seeing down survivors in case you decide to slug or the aura effect of hooked survivors but it doesn't prevent the black bubble whenever you hook someone so in a map like RPD 
or with characters that have a secondary objective that can distract survivors like the Cenobite or the Pig, this perk can be kinda good. It synergizes with Hex plaything, as it prevents the aura of the totem from being revealed. Even if I think the perk is as good as it is, it is undeniable that as a Hex perk, it is pretty underwhelming. And since it is a Hex perk, it has the risk of being completely useless when broken. So most players don't want to run it or experiment with it when there are safer options out there. Coupe de Gras, 0.4% This perk belongs to the Twins, a character that by itself has the lowest pick rate in the game, so it's already surprising that it's not the least used perk. But I think that's because it's probably the most fun perk in this video and it can definitely be better. This perk extends the launch attack for 80% by consuming a token, and you get a token for each generator V pair. Death Heart completely counters this perk, and the fact that you only get one token after each generator is repaired is way too little for what the perk does. There is a risk of consuming a token by mistake as it activates any time you do a launch attack, and since you only get 5 tokens the entire match, that all combined makes the perk very situational and uncomfortable to use most of the time, but whenever it works, it feels very satisfying. I think no matter what changes the perks get, it will still be one of the least used perks in DBD because it belongs to the twins, a character that honestly I feel has no salvation and will always be one of the least picked characters. It doesn't hurt to maybe make the perk get tokens whenever a survivor is hooked or make it so that the token isn't consumed whenever the extra length isn't used, but I guess with the way the perk is programmed, this is impossible to ask. Grim Embrace 0.39% Grim Embrace is an artist perk that in terms of design, I think it's actually pretty cool. Every time you hook a unique survivor, you get one token. When you hook the last survivor, all generators are blocked for 40 seconds, and the aura of the obsession is revealed for 5 seconds, so you have to hook all survivors in the match at least once in order to get 10 seconds extra of what Deadlocks gives for free for each generator. The effect is too weak for the requirement, and compared to other perks like No Way Out, it's not that useful. If you hook the obsession last, you don't get the benefit from the aura reading, and I don't know if that's an oversight by the devs or not. But honestly, you shouldn't be punished for using one of your perks like that. It belongs to the artist, who is a very strong character, but not many would buy her as the first choice, which will lower the pick rate naturally. If that was not enough, Pain Resonance and Pentimento completely overshadow Grim Embrace, so besides using it for the Adept, there is no reason to incorporate Grim Embrace in your build. There needs to be a better incentive to run this perk, like maybe an overall gen penalty after hooking the last survivor and reveal the auras of all survivors instead of only the obsession. Overwhelming Presence 0.38% Overwhelming Presence is in my opinion the worst offender in this list, even if it's the fifth least picked perk according to Nightlight. This is because it belongs to the Doctor, a character that most players have and one of the oldest so there is no excuse unlike any of the characters like the artist or twins, and it's also interesting because the effect is not that bad. It completely counters all items like flashlights or toolboxes except in some heals. The thing is that nobody is interested in the effects of this perk because it is passive, and players want active effects, things they can see and say, oh, this was because of this perk, and whenever someone wants to counter an item, they just use Franklin's Demise, which completely counters all of them, or Lightborn, which makes flashlights useless. No content creator promotes this perk as being good, I haven't seen any survivor ever complain about how strong this perk is, it's always Franklin's or Lightborn. When you really think about it, the perk is not that bad, it's just that there are just way better options instead. Hex Retribution 0.37% Retribution is a Deathslinger Hex Totem that gives the Oblivious status effect to any survivor that interacts with the dual totem and also reveals the aura of all survivors for 15 seconds once a Hex Totem is broken or blessed. 
On paper, it's not a bad perk, but the issue is that this is a hex perk that requires other hexes in order to get the full potential from it, so you cannot just run it as your only hex because survivors have no reason to search for it and break it, and it isn't that good at its job because hex undying is superior in every way as a secondary hex. So when you have a perk that needs an entire perk loadout built around it, and since hex builds were never popular, hex retribution never got the time to shine. So what is the solution for this perk? I have seen the classic suggestion of making the perk not a hex anymore, but I think it removes the spirit of the perk itself. I think buffing the numbers a little and a shift in the meta that benefits hex perks would increase the pick rates of hex retribution, something that, honestly, I don't see anytime soon. Zanshin Tactics 0.3% Zanshin Tactics is an only teachable perk that has a very simple effect. It reveals the aura of all windows and pallets around you. So why does nobody use it? That's because 99.7% of killer players understand that this perk is one of the worst perks in the entire game. But unlike any of the other perks mentioned in this video, the 0.3 that uses Zanshin Tactics is a very loud minority that swears on their life that Zanshin is actually the most slept on perk in the entire game with characters like Clown, Artist, Nurse or Doctor. And honestly, I think this perk would have been the number one if it weren't for the Otsdarva video where he popularized the 142 pages long clone guide that claims that Zanshin is the best perk for the clown. I'm part of the majority, I don't think this perk is that good or even useful when compared to other aura reading perks like Lethal Pursuer or I'm All Ears, and as a killer player, I think it's crucial to know the map layouts and learn them instead of depending on a perk. Also, the survivor equivalent, Windows of Opportunity, is actually very useful because as a survivor, you don't know what pallet has been used or not, but as a killer, you literally interact with the pallets firsthand, so knowing which ones are used or unused shouldn't be a problem for experienced players. So we have a perk that some people swear upon, but overall, it's a perk designed to help new players, while it's stuck on a complicated character like the Oni, so nobody is going to unlock him first as their first choice only for this perk, which results in a very low pick rate. Now, before we move on to the second least used killer perk in DBD, I wanted to talk about a special case here, and that is Gearhead. According to Nightlight, the perk has a 0.26% of usage, so it would make it the third least picked perk in DVD for killers, but the developers have announced a rework that I think makes Gearhead not bad at all. And since most people are likely going to try it out, myself included, I think the pick rate would increase automatically. Septic Touch 0.19% I am honestly sad about Septic Touch because I originally thought that this was going to be a pretty good perk that would counter self-healing and death heart, since it gives the blindness and exhausted status effects to anyone healing inside the terror radius. The problem is that this perk comes with the dredge a character that can have its terror radius suppressed for a long period of time, so it's counteractive to use this perk on Dredge, so already that means that this perk would have a naturally low pick rate if it didn't stand out, and sadly it doesn't, because the effect itself is not that good, and there are way better anti-healing perks like buffed Colrophobia or Blood Echo, even the new perk Leverage is a better anti-heal perk overall, but probably the best anti-heal perk by far is Sloppy Butcher, which is one of the most used and accessible perks for new players, so I can guarantee that nobody has ever bought the Dredge exclusively for this perk so they can use it in their builds and nobody is waiting for it to appear in the shrine besides the completionists that want to have everything unlocked. Maybe more people give it a chance once the mid-chapter comes out, which will boost its pick rate, but overall it's still a terrible perk that needs changes. Hangman Streak 0.13% And on dead last, with the least amount of usage in DVD, we have Hangman Streak, a perk from the pig which has been in the game for a long time, and if you ask me, 
I believe this is by far the worst perk in DBD and also the worst design perk as well because it's the only killer perk that gets completely outclassed by another one, Awakened Awareness. Not only are all of the perks of the pig mediocre, with the only exception being make your choice for niche builds, but Hangman's trick basically gives no value in the match and the pig is a licensed character, so less players will have access to her. I could go on and on for a long time explaining why this perk is bad and it deserves such a low pick rate, but I don't think I have to. And I also already explained my position regarding this perk and the changes I would do in my other video where I talk about the, in my opinion, worst design perks in DVD. So if you are interested, check it out over here. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.